Hello and thanks for joining us. It's back to school time here in France, which means a whole new season of cultural gems to look out for. Today, we're talking about some of the Paris exhibitions on show alongside a studio guest described as the enfant terrible of the Berlin art scene. Hello to German artist Jonathan Mies. Thanks for being here. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, you're a painter, sculptor, performance artist and installation artist. Your work has been shown all over the world. Um, you're often described as the bad boy of art. What do you think about this introduction? No, I'm the sweet boy of art. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love art and I love love and I do everything with total passion and with total energy. And I'm Johnny the Art Kid. <laughs> Johnny the Art Kid, you're in Paris um, for a new exhibition at the Templon Gallery. It delves into the power of tales and legends, fairy tales, really. Tell us more about it. Yeah, we l should live in a fairy tale. I'm interested in the Gesamtkunstwerk, Gesamtkunstwerk France, Gesamtkunstwerk Germany. I'm interested in the total power of art. And I think that art should rule the world and that we should be led by art. The leadership should be art. And then we are free and then we are happy. <laughs> I'm, um, my goal is total freedom. No censorship, love, friendship, family, playing, childhood. That's a fairy tale. That's a fairy tale. And well, let's look at some of the works that are on show. And um, we've got The Wizard of Oz, um, which we can see, Alice in Wonderland, and Little Red Riding Hood. Um, let's talk about that one in particular. Tell us about your interpretation of Little Red Riding Hood. I love Little Red Riding Hood because I am Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's a self-portrait. I'm always using self-portraits like Fantomas or uh, Alice in Wonderland, Little Red Riding Hood, Wizard of Oz. I always put myself into the scenery and then I can deal with it. And then it's, uh, it's the dream world, the counter world, the other world. And we need positive energy, no fear. Yeah, the world is so full but of fear. The fairy tales are full of, of fear, though, aren't they? They're not just positive. That's true, but <laughs> in the end, the good wins, and we can learn so much from the fairy tales, and that's what I'm doing constantly. I'm constantly thinking about my childhood and transforming it into the future, because art has to rule the world. I don't want ideology. I don't want politics. I don't want religion. I want freedom. Freedom, 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 and we have to smile into the future because the future will be great. Tell us what, um, then, in, in a sentence, what's your mission as an artist? Um, the mission is that art is the strongest power and art is the survivor. Art survives. From all times, only art survived. And that's why we have to get this power um, and understand that art is power without ideological power. It's thus just the power of nature, Gesamtkunstwerk, living, breathing, sleeping, that is art. Yeah? Doing something without fear, without negative energy, just doing it like children are doing a uh, future by playing. Yeah? Well, this I do think that anyone watching is going to be desperate to go and see um, your exhibition because we definitely need some positivity at the moment in the world. Your exhibition, it's called Dr. Doc, Dr. High Noon is back, Wonderland de Large. It's on at the Templon Gallery until the 28th of October in Paris. Well, next we're going to talk about another exhibition, um, an Australian artist known for his larger-than-life sculptures, Ron Muick. Have you seen his work before? Absolutely. Um, he's back at the Cartier Foundation in Paris with his striking hyper-realist um, creations that always provoke a reaction. Peter O'Brien has this report. Ron Muick's silicon and fiberglass marvels speak for themselves. <laughs> 
and speak straight to your gut when you see them. I'm stupefied. It's extremely realistic. It's like the baby's looking at us. I've rarely seen something so powerful. Babies are so small that you don't see all the details. But here it's like it's zoomed in, so you can see how well they're made. Attention to detail is the self-taught sculptor's trademark. The former puppet maker never gives interviews. His pieces take months, sometimes years, to make. They number 48 over a career spanning 27 years. This installation, built for a museum in Melbourne, has never before left Australia. It took two months to bring it here by boat. These are a hundred fiberglass curls, finished by the artist in 2017. They're all from the same mold, but all different. The skull motif invokes pop culture, but also darker themes like genocide. The visitor has to come up with their own opinion. In his workshop on the Isle of Wight in the UK, the artist drew then sculpted his latest piece with the help of a 3D printer three menacing dogs to exercise a childhood fear. I find it almost unpleasant. I feel uneasy. Because as always, with von Reck, it's very realistic. The clay and wax sculpture This Little Piggy is the first time Newark has shown a work in progress and a rare group scene for an artist known for his depictions of intimacy and solitude from birth to death. And I'm here in the studio with the artist Jonathan Mees, who has a new show opening in Paris at the Templon Gallery this weekend. Um, now, we heard someone there describe Ron Muick's work as almost unpleasant. Uh, you're known for the use of challenging gestures and provocative tools. The most talked about, of course, is the Nazi salute, um, something deeply connected with the darkest time in the 20th century. For you, do you think it's an artist's role to push boundaries and make people sometimes feel uncomfortable? Absolutely. Um, we have to provoke, especially ourselves, to uh, go on, to, uh, to be able to enter the future. Because the past is the past, and we need the future. And so we have to learn, and we have to provoke, and we have to do that with a smile, and we have to uh, put all bad energy into art and not into reality. We need uh, wars on stage, in films, in books, but not in reality. And we should learn that. And I was so happy to look into the faces of all these babies, of these uh, fantastic artists, and there you see love, future, and the wish to enter the dreamland of future. When you did um, the Nazi salute, did, yes. did you know, you must have known, the reaction that you were going to get for it? Yeah, but this is, is this is okay. I mean, this is art, and uh, we have to challenge our, also ourselves. My mother is 93 years old. She comes from that time. And just Nazi to tell time. people, she's actually sitting here in the studio with us. It's the first time I've done an interview with someone whose mum is sitting in the studio with us. My mum is unvotable authority. My mum is total art. My mum is Gesamtkunstwerk Germany. She is the master. She is the mastermind for me. And I have to uh, um, please her. Uh, in going on and being a nice child and doing art and uh, um, ch challenging the future, and that is my goal. Um, how do you stay so positive about the future, considering the times we're living in? I think it can only be better, and we have to work on it, but without having fear and without producing fear, because fear is not a good advisor. And you should not listen to people who make fear. You should listen to other people, and especially to your heart. You have to listen to your heart. And it's not interested in fear and bitterness. So would you watch the news, for example, a channel like France 24, or do you stay away from the news? I watch the news and I'm very sad about it, my mother too, and we are talking about it and then we say no. That's just the past and there's something wrong about it. We need positive energy and we need art uh, um, to, to lead us, to rule us and to be our partner and to be our friends and to be our family. We need family business. We have to start with ourselves.
Your previous exhibition um, at the city's Templon Gallery, um, Mies Haute Couture, paid tribute to fashion yes. and to Paris as a fashion capital. Tell us, you're here in Paris for the opening of your new show. What does the city represent for you? Paris is a total fantasy world for me. It's a fashion, it's a, a fairy tale. My girlfriend loves fashion, she comes later. Also my sister, we love fashion. I love Karl Lagerfeld, I love all this. This dressing up, um, being happy, challenging the future, wanting something new. I love it. I love this energy, it's positive energy. Yeah, To dress up nicely is something super. Yeah, I love uniforms, of course, <laughs> yeah, but I'm thrilled to be here. Jonathan, thank you so much. You've given us all a bit of positive energy uh, this day. Thank you so much for being here and good luck with your exhibition. We're going to end actually with an exhibition devoted to um, French fashion photographer Frank Orva. And 170 prints are on show at Frank Orva, Paris, the world and fashion at the Jeu de Pomme, a museum in Paris until the end of October. Thanks for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you. See you next time.